Earlier in the season, I did a little bit of a trim on Cousin It, and with that, I took off quite a few cuttings from him, which I am propagating on behalf of Clinton Carmen and Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. And yes, the opening shot is Cousin It. I wanted to show him to you now that we are in the warmest part of the year. He is enjoying the wonderful conditions of the deep south, and well, now he doesn't even get any more direct sun on him. Still, the shades make him look cool, man. Anyway, this video is not about him. It's about baby it's. Well, then it's kind of sort of like about him. But let me give you a quick update on the baby it's. We'll do a comparison of the update that was aired on the 3rd of June and talk about the TLC I've been giving them to get them to this point. Raising these cuttings has been an absolute joy. It is wonderful to have a little cousin it nursery. He's been watching their progress from a distance because all his little babies, they live in the blooming alley in, I would say, deep shade comparison to their dad. It still gets a lot of light though, and it gets a lot of airflow. What it doesn't get down there up until recently is direct sun, which was super important right out of the gates because these little guys are very, very volatile, seeing as when you propagate maxillaria cuttings, you are literally cutting the roots off. And that means whatever base you put into the container, in my case, it's sphagnum moss in a semi-hydroponic setup, but those cuttings are completely rootless. So to make sure that they are safe and that they can grow and that all the pseudobulbs that were brought along as part of the cuttings do not shrivel too much, we also need to cultivate the roots that are in these sheaths. That's all full of roots. So let me just show you one, just to prove a point in case you've not seen it. You see there, there's a root coming out of the bract. The only reason it is able to do that is because of high humidity. Now, on days where I didn't have high humidity, there was a lot of misting. And high humidity or misting, whichever way you want to call it, it makes these bracts much more supple, easier and pliable for roots to get through. It is not the aim in order to propagate maxillaria cuttings to get roots to come through. But if you're blessed with a high humidity environment, then this is what can happen. However, the moment the air dries out, suddenly you're probably faced with these roots drying out as well. So in order to get a little bit of best of both worlds, I know, I know, I still haven't showed the cuttings that have been spoken for, just a little bit of suspense every now and then on my channel. To ensure that nothing frazzles out at this stage, that there is continued growth, it is also possible to get the roots that are higher up into the media where they will then adapt and support the rest of the structures in the hopes to stop the shriveling. And you can stop the shriveling also by keeping them well, well misted as I did. I would like to mist them one more time before it's bedtime, but I have 83% humidity at 7 p.m. Can you believe it? And the reason I waited so long to film this is because while it is still nice and toasty and warm, the sun is not as strong anymore. And as mentioned, these have not been exposed to any direct sunshine up until recently based on the angle of the sun. Any browning you see is not sunburn. It is unfortunately cold damage from the winter of 22 and 23. Now, here we have Clinton Carmen's cluster. Okay, so we're seeing some shriveling on the pseudobulbs. I'm not concerned because the new growths are developing beautifully. Just wonderful. And you can see that there is a root coming out right there. Cutie patootie. Look at this though. They're coming out at the base there, which is the future because that one is going to go down into the medium. And I'm really digging the progress of this cutting, Clinton Carmen. Everything is looking wonderful and is going according to plan. You can also see how roots are bulging through the bracts here. That is so typical, all the roots growing down through the bracts, getting to the base and eventually into the media. This is loaded and so loaded, the softened bracts from the misting and the high humidity are opening up, exposing them. Fernanda Nascimento orchids and succulents, 
Here is your cluster. New growth are still progressing nicely. The ones at the end are doing beautifully. Look at that. That is coming out very nice. We don't have any concertina leaves. We have got nothing that's stopping them from progressing. We also have a brand new one right at the base. So this one grew separately as maxillarias do. So the roots of this one are going to go straight into the pot. And let me show you something. Let me just turn this around very gently. Can you see what I see? Huh? roots down in the media. This is fantastic. So adapted roots, new growth. Everything is going wonderfully. Look, Clinton Carmen. I did not show this to you before, but look at that. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? I am so happy that your bebes are doing beautifully. While the pseudobulbs are still a little bit on the shriveled side, they will plump up soon enough now with roots actively growing in the media. Let me just check the other cuttings. You see, when I say check, I mean check because they have been down <laughs> on that shelf and I hardly moved them. So this is oof, so happy, so pleased. Now I did mention that this would happen, but it is still nice to be able to show you the reality versus the theory. Now, this one, let's have a look. I don't see anything. What's up here is a bit of grass. Nothing's come up against the edge of the pot that I can see. Doesn't mean that there aren't roots in there because there certainly are roots at the base. <laughs> it won't be long. So yeah, these are the little cousin it bebes, but I have one more maxillaria that I would like to show you. It is from Insa Orchids and ADD. Forgive me if I haven't taken all the hair off. This one doesn't get moved either. It lives one floor higher than the little baby it. However, this one was also potted up, a little bit more slanted. It's a maxillaria tenuifolia. You can see a new growth coming here at the base, brand new. That is amazing because, again, roots will go straight into the pot. That is if it makes it, because the mix in the semi-hydroponic pot here is super water retentive, which is geared towards my normally very dry climate. And I had the, exactly the opposite, even throughout the month of August. So I'm hoping that this growth will make it. There's another one that has made it, very small little one coming out of the sides. This one has made it. And this one appears to be a very slow growing tenuifolia. No surprises there. Then my other variety is as well. But you can see a new growth right here and another one right here trying to make it. Thankfully, I'm not seeing any of the blackening that the orchid came with. There is nothing new. I was very concerned about some of the black streaks. That's why she has also not been groomed. She is in a very volatile situation still. This one also gets misted, but not as frequently as the baby it's over there because of their high water retentive media and the size of the pot. The difference being, yes, I've got sphagnum moss in a semi-hydroponic setup here, but the size of the pot, if it were to get very, very dry, <laughs> that pot is going to dry out and that's no bueno. So when it came to fertilizing, yes, they have been fertilized, but extremely weakly. I would say 50 parts per million. Maybe if I got to 100, that's because I had something left over from the tolumnias. They have had seaweed. They have had bactophil. They've had a bit of calcium nitrate, but the quantities I'm talking about are 50 parts per million and not every day. Of course, there's been more plain RO water thrown at these orchids than fertilizer. But just to give them a little bit of a boost, a little snack for the little ones is never a bad thing. So I hope the recipients of the baby it's are encouraged by their progress, excited about their arrival. I'm aiming for the end of September, beginning of October, just to make sure that the conditions are conducive with shipping baby orchids. Keep them safe and all that good stuff. And I do hope that if Insa Orchids and ADD sees this video, that he can see his tenuifolia is alive and trying, and I am trying to help it along. So appreciate you watching this quick update. If you have any questions of anything regarding care, thoughts that I didn't circle back to, please let me know in the comments or just let me know how you are doing. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day. 
on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.